very much uh, for the invitation, uh, Japan Economic Foundation. The IDS is coming to be IDS means it's the old organization. I uh, used to know Mario Lombarte uh, very well. He was my boss at ADB Institute. So thank you very much for the invitation. So let me uh, continue the, uh, the discussions and, uh, by the previous speakers. Uh, very rightly, they presented background of populism, but for me it is very tough because I am a trade economist and populism is uh, not very unknown to me. So what I do, I try to uh, give you a flavor that how the global economy being affected due to the uh, populist measures and uh, particularly with focus on in India. Uh, let me uh, move on. Uh, how do you... So, um, uh, just a quick glance through, uh, basically it's the just background, but how, um, how do, uh, I mean, uh, how you know then about the populism, the way we, we look at in some, some, some bullet points. Uh, first is, uh, uh, it is a measure, the group, a set of measures that change the uh, steady state. It could be from economy, it could be culture, it could be security, it could be space. You have many examples. Um, so, so in a way, populism uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, and the line between good and bad is very, very uncertain. And at least the economists they don't know the causal links, the links between the economic development and populist measures. Second is that uh, the populist leaders, particularly the leaders, means the political leaders. Uh, you can think the populists uh, or the leaders. Uh, they uh, are not just anti-pluralism. Uh, they are also anti-elite. Historically, uh, we know the entire movement of the communist developments, how it was anti-elite and all those things. And uh, populism, uh, populism versus proximity of the people in a democratic setup with the political leaders, they pick up the populist measures. They try to uh, go to the uh, people in the mass. So in India, it is the largest democracy. And we see we are very familiar with populist measures coming before the election or given the election manifesto, uh, how they are being framed and how they are being implemented. So many times we found that the, the mass leaders, they need to go touch uh, the poor people when the, and, and there are you know, uh, populist measures to link and to lead the political party or the leaders. Uh, it's a zero sum game or positive sum game. Uh, some populist measures certainly give uh, positive something. The good example is Indian uh, goods and services tax. You know, India, uh, that's the union uh, of, it is a continent, but still for 70 years, the crossing the borders from one province to another province, uh, goods and services used to pay taxes and duties and et cetera, et cetera. So, so this has been dismantled. So goods and services tax in India, now it's a one nation and a one tax. It's a populist measure. Previous government could not do it. The new government, the Prime Minister Modi, who took the initiative. So it is actually helping the government to pick up more revenue, quality revenue, that's what. So, so, so this is a positive sum when you look at the India in a federal state. And then uh, when it comes to uh, populism in terms of trade and regional integrations, anti-trade initiatives are many there by America, uh, making India, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, uh, anti-immigration, I mean, great example, this Indian company I was talking to just a few days back, the biggest investment in the Philippines is a company called TCS, Tata Consultancy Services. The gentleman who set up, uh, he, uh, he started in 2012. Now 4,000 employees, 4,000 employees, and 98% of the Filipinos, this, this Indian investments, ITPP company. And he was sharing that the, the problems the company is, is facing in terms of H-1B visa, the professionals who do the sophisticated you know, cyber uh, development or planning, how it's a bit difficult for Indian companies to do a service offshore to the yeah, Americans. So anti-immigration and things are there, so these are, very much, you know, uh, part of uh, the popular measures and which are affecting the globalization process. 
And we are, we know the Brexit, uh, you, uh, uh, America's exit from the TPP, and there are many examples. So uh, presently, the world is, is, is tight, it's anti-globalization, numbers are more. Uh, let me move on. Uh, this is a uh, very uncertain uh, on the world, uncertain global economy. And there are, we've seen, if you come to uh, some, uh, if you look at uh, the trend line, uh, uh, the, the growth in world trade by uh, advanced economies and emerging market developing economies in the global, you can see the populist measures comes when there's a downturn. So economic downturn forces the leaders, the political parties, the governments to undertake the populist measures as a safeguard. Uh, so uh, so uh, since the trade is slowing down, uh, as we have seen from, from, the, from here, uh, from, uh, from the real GDP, so we expect that you know, for, from 2017 to 2022, these lines going downwards, we expect more such populist measures for coming. This is just an, 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 you know, the case soon. Uh, and also important to see that how, how the Chinese economy is doing, because if you come to this, uh, this, this, this slides, you can see, oh, you can see this Chinese export growth uh, to the United States to, all the partners are very slowing down. So it is very much important to watch how the China is doing, because China will be certainly will be affected by the populist measures taken its partner countries, and which will be forced to China to take another populist measures because it's moved in a cyclical order on a reciprocal basis. So, so also you know trade measures. If I take 2019 to 2016 per month, 12 anti-globalization trade measures being taken by uh, the countries in the world. It's the WTO uh, release in October 2017. Even though they're just going down over the time, but it shows, uh, it's, it's a good number. 12 new measures are coming up, which is, uh, some of them might be uh, uh, populist measures in, in, in trade. Uh, uh, there are many downside risks. Uh, trade protectionism going up and by country, then uh, you know, US policies, Europe, how it's doing, financial markets. So those are uh, very much you know, un, uh, you know, parts of this uncertain uh, global economy. Uncertainty has also come how the North Korea uh, looks at South China Sea. So in a way, the free trade is, which I feel that it's no more the trade on the free terms. Uh, let me look at uh, my last part of my presentation is that. So this is, given that background, what do we expect uh, in Asia in, in coming, coming years? First of all, uh, there would be, uh, we are worried about capital outlay, more and more people in China looking for freedom. So freedom is a big issue in China. India's uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises, so they are facing existential problem because of demonetization. You know, the demonetization could be a populist measure. Demonetization is that your currency note replaced suddenly, and next day morning you found that the notes in your wallet is not, not valid anymore. So, so those, and there will be more, you know, populist measures if you look at the next seven, eight years, because the world is slowing down. It will be, uh, you know, de de growth in the GDP growth of the, the developed or advanced economies is slowing down from 2017 to 2022 IMF forecast. It will be basically driven by the emerging developing markets and world GDP growth almost in the second positions. So it means that we will expect more populist measures in, in, in the coming years, no doubt. Uh, let me. Then, what could be the uh, countermeasures? My last slide. I think this is the time when you have, uh, you know, Protectionism is rising, the world is slowing, countries with high foreign exchange reserves, like China, uh, they will be continue to invest in infrastructure development. Infrastructure is just not physical infrastructure, it could be digital infrastructure, human resource development, disaster management, creation of new technology space, undersea explorations, those things. 
So there will be more and more uh, infrastructure development kind of thing, and mega corridors like Belt and Road Initiative. This Japan is with uh, India looking for uh, Asia Africa Growth Corridor. All these things will be coming up more and more. Countries will be forced to uh, reduce the NTMs. Uh, Dr. Damori was giving an example. Uh, I just took, this is the last slide. So, so I think product and process standards will be more harmonized uh, in, in this time. Regional value chains will come up more. Uh, and and as a countermeasures, if we look for uh, in an alternative uh, ways to promote trade, protect trade, then implement on the SDG, because uh, SDGs, uh, you know, goals to be met by 2030, invest on in human resources, health, education, soft infrastructure, faster communications, these are the countermeasures which, uh, which countries will be moving more from. Trade lead globalization to take rest, move into, invest on the human, human resources, invest on the, on the domestic economy. Uh, then, but we, we need to watch that's it, that's in, uh, you know, some, some developments uh, very carefully. First is how the Chinese economy is performing and its governance. Uh, yesterday, the China has banned Skype uh, you know, uh, communications. Uh, uh, they manufacture uh, Apple phone, but no Skype. So we have to watch how the Chinese economy performs and uh, how its governance, because countries uh, is looking for people in China is looking for more freedom. So we need to see what, how China is doing. The rise of nationalism, terrorism, war environment, national disaster, climate change, these, will, these are the issues we'll take care of. You know, we'll, you know, populist measures, are, these are the issues we need to look at very carefully. And then the use of technology and innovations, like the advanced economies, the Japan will present us how we produce more from less and less resources. Those things are very important, and we need to watch very carefully. I call it the Indian election in 2019 because so far the populist measures taken by the current government uh, in 2019 the election is coming up and we need to watch very very carefully how, how India is coming up with this new system. And the new strategic equations, we call it what? Japan, India, US and Australia, how these four countries are ganging up and how the new equations is coming up you know, in, the, in the global economy and also in the regional uh, in the Asian region. That's, we, we need to look at these five things very carefully when you take any, you know, we introduce any countermeasures or we take a discourse for moving for the regional integration in the trade. Thank you.